Hello, everybody. This is uh, Trends Economics here. Um, I haven't posted a video in a long time, but I feel like it is time to post a new video when it comes to the crossroads in the current investment atmosphere. And my thoughts on this is I feel like the equities have kind of reached a peak. We're very close to that peak. Um, one thing I had found for current undervalued sectors, I feel like utilities are a fairly undervalued uh, area. It's very interesting when it comes to the correlation to where gold usually goes up when the U.S. dollar index falls or is low, but the correlation between the two are both relatively high. That's a very interesting thing, I think. When it comes to equities in general, I feel like there could possibly be a little bit more room to run to the upside to make new record highs. It could be throughout the rest of April to do that. I don't know. That, that uh, just feels like that could be the, um, the scenario there. And when it comes to fixed assets, uh, such as long-term bonds, short-term bonds, maybe even money markets, it's all interest rate sensitive. And I feel if you have a longer term time frame for investing in compounding growth and compounding interest gain capital in your portfolio, I feel like long-term bonds or maybe like a bond index of some sort might not be a bad thing to do, diversify more heavy right now. For the simple fact that interest rates are high, the Fed has announced that it could see up to three interest rate cuts this year yet. Even if that don't happen, typically the market prices that scenario in. Now, we know that interest rates at some point is going to come back down. Now, does that mean that the Fed will induce those interest rate cuts? Or does that mean that the interest rate cuts will come during bad times that the Fed has to cut interest rates? That scenario is yet to play out, and I'm sure time is of the essence. We will find that out soon enough. If I had to guess, I would think that the Fed is probably going to cut interest rates because the environment uh, is in more of a dire situation away from inflationary pressures that makes them want to do that. That's my thought on that. When it comes to uh, undervalued assets at this point in time, typically in April, the financial sector seems to do the best. At this point in time, I don't think that's going to be the case. I truly think that utility stocks will be the best. One I particularly follow at this point in time is NextEra Energy. I think that stock is uh, more of a bullish scenario at this point in time. It could take the rest of the whole new month of April to make that show true, but I think that could be a very good bet for the short term. Um, you can always try... If you really want, you can try to get into the short-term, high-risk, high-reward type scenarios. I just recently had done the Donald Trump uh, Media Technology Company. Um, I had got in at a very decent price. It took me a little more than a day and in less than about 30 minutes to be able to make a little bit of change on that because it was very wild with volume and price action on that day. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I recommend being an investor, not more of a gambler. The uh, reason being is you really have to identify the trends with MACD, um, the classics, um, Fibonacci, uh, when it comes to learning how to trade on the dime, if you will. Uh, it takes a little more um, in the know to do that. So that's why I really don't recommend for people that have recently even up to like three to five years of uh, knowledge in investing or even 
trading investing to really do something like that. But as an investing, I think one of the best undervalued areas right now is the utility energy stocks. Um, what do I see, you know, for kind of into the later part of 2024? Um, I see the Fed doing anywhere between, you know, one to three interest rate cuts. Um, I think if you're a younger investor, I think it's really wise to uh, capitalize on that and get your fixed assets in alignment uh, at these lower interest rate prices uh, for the treasuries. Uh, money market funds are good currently. As soon as they start dropping the interest rates on that, the uh, yields that are paid on the money market funds are going to start dropping. So keep that in mind, uh, you know. It's all on due diligence, what you decide to put in and what you, you're going to get back out of it. So you have to keep mindful of the interest rates dropping on those. At some point in time, there is a lot of cash on the sidelines in money market funds that may be coming into equities. I had talked to a few different financial advisors recently, and they think that stocks are going to go up because of that. I think that's the contrary. I think the fixed assets are going to start coming up because there's distress in either GDP growth or just simply because there's a lot of stress in the financial sector. The Fed recently has come out and said that they see that there are mid-sized regional banks that are going to start having issues. Is that something that's going to be systemic? Time will tell. Uh, but I think at this point in time... Uh, you know, I it's too early to tell on that. I, I, I truly feel with Silicon Bank and even uh, New York um, Community Bank as of recent, uh, in the recent headlines, I think that's very plausible that you're going to start having some medium-sized bank issues. Uh, and is that going to spark the Fed's reason to start dropping interest rates more so in the later half of 2024? Time will tell, but I think that's probably possible. And from there on out, um, I think that it is probably wise to start to build a little bit more of a cash position because equities are going to start to fall. Um, and you can have a better dollar cost average in purchasing your stocks from where they're at now with the dollar cost averages being high for a lot of these indexes. Um, you know, a lot of S&P indexes are great. Um but I would not suggest taking cash out during a fall because even uh, the great Warren Buffett and others that are very great investors have collaboratively agreed that it is best to stay invested and add to a falling stock index price to get a better stock uh, dollar cost average on a fall to lower that dollar cost average so that you can have a better payout and a better position when that index starts to rise once again. Um, in doing so, I used to be a precious metal gold bug, um, particularly silver. I did very w good back in the recent day in the Great Financial Recession back in 2008. Uh, did very well in 2010 and up to February 2011. I remember the date very well because I did very good. On that, and I do think that it's very interesting. Like I said earlier, in part in the video between the dollar index and where gold's currently at at highs. Usually, the dollar index is near lows when the gold is at the highs. It's very interesting, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in that scenario in the upcoming time here. Um, and when it comes, uh, just to retrace real briefly, and we'll finish up the video. They always stay say invested when it comes to these index funds, particularly a very popular one, an S&P 500 index fund, when it comes to reinvesting dividends in those funds. Because if you do so, the historical norm has shown that even if gold goes up, so does the inflation in the stock market pushing equities prices higher. I urge you to look that up. It is absolutely true. In, 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 in saying so, the dividends reinvested in those funds over time will keep pace with gold. 
yes, I used to be a gold bug. I do understand this from both sides of the scenario. At this point in time, that's my thoughts on the current markets. Uh, I look forward to your comments in the comments section. Y'all take care and we'll talk to you next time.